Hello and welcome to PlayStation Access. My name is Rob. Joining us today is Rosie. Hello, everyone. We are fresh from our first hands-on. Well, actually, it's my second hands-on. It's your first first (laughs) hands-on, Rosie, with Lego Horizon Adventures coming to PS5 on the 14th of November. We got a really good, hefty chunk of time with the game which felt really exciting. Uh, We played the game cooperatively. The game is available either in local co-op or online co-op. We played locally together on the same PS5. Yep. Um, And we're just going to be talking about our impressions of it. I think the first thing that hit us both, Rosie, and this hit me when I played the game at Summer Game Fest as well, is just how incredibly beautiful it looks. Oh, it's a stunning game. I love the um, like the details that they've managed to do with the Lego bricks. I mean, I'm going to say it before you say it because I know you're known for water graphics, but you did point it out and uh, at the <laughs> event, but I'm going to make, just, I'm going to say it. It's the, the waterfall genuinely was my favourite visual, I think, in the whole game because of how they made it look so beautiful with the Lego bricks. It had like different shades of um, bricks that they used with a slight you know you get those slightly transparent bricks as well i kind of remember those being in the waterfall as well it just looked really stunning it was a really inventive way to make flowing water with lego Mm. i thought and i think it's it's not just the visual fidelity of it and and we got like a really close-up look in the in the costume customization menu which we'll talk about a little later on you can go really close in on the character models and you can see all the little imperfections in in the plastic lego models all the little scuffs and scratches yeah. and nicks in it it just genuinely looks like a real like a tangible plastic lego object in front of you it is astonishing how good it looks i think yeah uh, but it's not just the graphical fidelity it's also the animation yes so the way the waterfall was moving it was moving in that slightly like almost stop motion stop motion quality lego way which you will be instantly familiar with if you've if you've watched any of the lego movies or played any of the previous lego games but i think visually uh, lego horizon adventures is a step up from any lego game i've seen previously i think it just looks absolutely gorgeous yeah it's really nailed the vibe of you are in like the Lego universe. I kept on looking at how the characters run when you're talking about the animation and the way their legs literally go from like, you know, right foot forward, left foot back, and then they just switch between the (laughs) two. But it's not as if it's like actual legs moving. It's like, no, they're Lego bricks. So of course they're just going to be like, like just switching between the two. It looks so good. There's there's like a really coherent, cohesive um, visual identity to Lego, I think, across the game's and the movies and and Lego Horizon Adventures really nails that playful vibe. Yeah, I think it, it's just that in that essence of of what Lego is in entertainment, and it and it's there. Like you're playing, like like a kid playing around. Like it's exactly how you would play with Lego as a kid. If you were moving a Lego character around, you'd make them move in the way that they move in the game, and it's just yeah. incredibly satisfying and charming uh, to to play and watch. Uh, but it, it's not just visually as well i think the whole tone in terms of the humor has has come across so brilliantly and just works so perfectly with the world of horizon like the amount of times we just burst out laughing when we were playing the game <laughs> like so many instances where where rost first gives aloy the, the focus and she's like oh i bet this is an incredibly rare object he's like oh no i've got a bag full of them here Go on, give just, them to your friends <laughs> go on tips out a big bag full of them <laughs> Uh, but just this happens all the time, uh, and I think it's so wonderful hearing Ashley Birch playing Aloy in in a different way. Yeah, able to tune into that that humour, that sort of like quirky, off the wall, charming Lego humour, uh, and the way she's delivered the performance as Aloy in this game. I think it's so much fun. It sounds like she's having an absolute blast. It sounds like all the cast are having an absolute blast. Like there wasn't a single role where I thought they are not having fun with this. They, all of them, even when um, Rost is doing the narration, he knows that he's like the story narrator. So he kind of does that whispery kind of more, I'm the narrator of this story and I know it sort of vibe. So you can tell he's just having a great time as well. Um, And it's really nice to see the the actors as well just bounce off each other in this really energetic vibe like you said Ashley um, just did a fantastic role at being so energetic and bubbly um, and that blending in with the animations and the writing of Lego games just comes together to really bring a more like light-hearted tone to Horizon but it's still 
follows the plot of Horizon. Uh, like even when they're talking about uh, the cult who worship the sun and everything, they yes. make all the jokes like, "Oh, they say he has the best tan," and like, the, the, <laughs> "You have yeah. the world record for that." <laughs> so, so it is. It's sort of like it is based upon the the events of of Horizon of the world of Horizon that that we know. Uh, but as you say, it's got that funny Lego spin mm. on it. So what was very serious and oh my god, we've got to save the world. The world's going to end when you transfer it into Lego Horizon Adventures. It suddenly becomes funny and <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoy it I really enjoy yeah how they were talking to the like the, the cult leader and he was talking about ha, I'm gonna move I'm gonna remove all the shadows and I'm just gonna yeah, everyone's gonna have an amazing tan <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah in, in terms of, of of gameplay then um you played the prologue area yes I on did. your own first of all Rosie and it's, it's quite a short stretch of game where you know it teaches you the ropes teaches you how the controls work and and how the game flows uh, and then very quickly you unlock the ability to play the game in co-op um so you can choose to play the game in co-op if you wish you can play it as i said either locally or online uh, rosie and i played locally um and it's not split screen either so you get that really sort of like nice collaborative feel to it yeah. i think and i've already identified this as a game that i'm going to be playing with my daughter she's she's nearly nine now um and she's at that age where i can enjoy playing games with her yeah where she's not you know she can actually play a game <laughs> like when she was three or four i just had to pretend oh yes well done <laughs> but now she can actually play a platforming game and uh already I'm, I'm sort of on the lookout constantly for what what's the next game i'm gonna play with my daughter and this is this is gonna be it oh it's ideal for that but it's still got the um like the lego game sort of family friendly way of if one character is leading ahead a little bit more than the other then the other character will just teleport over to where they are yep. um so you know if you do are playing with uh, like children or anything like that and they just you know when you're thinking like come on we've got to do the rest of the game now <laughs> look there's the door and then they're busy looking at a flower that they found or something <laughs> they'll just be teleported to help yeah. you out and also I did um because I did like testing this when we did local co-op was how far the camera pans back like yeah. how far we could actually get away from each other uh, and I was I was impressed by how we could how distant we can actually be yeah. from each other there's quite a lot of like, like secret nooks and crannies you can explore mm. quite a lot of the time I'd be off going to the next bit of the plot and you would have found a treasure chest somewhere. Uh, wait, 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 so, wait, 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 I found a treasure chest. So one person can be building a thing somewhere or fighting an enemy while the other person is in a little secret hidey place finding a treasure chest. Yeah. Uh, so there is like room to explore. Um, but just in general, I think just exploring the world and then doing combat together just felt so sort of smooth and charming and... I just really enjoyed my time with it. So you have your traditional sort of attacks. Um, so Aloy has her has her bow and arrow. Yep. Um, Rost also has that. And But then I also played as Val at one point, who was like throwing spears. Um, and there are fun environmental uh, modifications you can use. So if there is a fire, you can fire your arrow through the fire and it becomes a fire arrow, which yeah. is useful when you're fighting enemies, but also useful when it comes to environmental puzzles so being able to set like uh, a bit of foliage on fire to reveal like a secret area where Ooh. there might be a treasure chest for example yeah lego is synonymous with just playing around and this game very much felt like it was built for okay there's there's the there's the thrust of the story yes but most of the time they just want you to be with your co-op partner yeah. mucking around playing around exploring poking things prodding things building things setting things on fire <laughs> but i will say going back to when you're talking about aloy and the character's attacks the combat i was very surprised about the combat in this game i'm used to uh lego games being you know, when you just go in there, you can just mindlessly, like, just attack the, the droids or something in LEGO Star Wars, for example. But in LEGO Horizon Adventures, you really did have to think about what you were going to do. Like, yes. when you go into the battle arena, um, we actually tried to be stealthy a lot of the time. And I just have to say, I love the detail that when you're stealthy, um, your characters have, like, changed their headwear. So it's, like, the flowers. The grass, you, yeah. The grass yeah. that you can hide in. So I really love that detail. But... 
even when we were trying to like be stealthy and plan our attack a bit more uh once the fight actually starts kicking off we were both like all oh, really having to think about what we had to do there was enemies spawning everywhere there were um there was like a hot dog stand that you could summon in <laughs> and just throws explosive hot dogs all around the place so there's multiple ways you can tackle yes. the fight even um using your focus to scan and find the enemy weaknesses we you know we were doing that trying to scan everything um but once they all get going it really is like Oh god, okay, well, is, let's go. There's definitely a healthy amount of challenge there. Mm. And lots of things that you you can use. You've got lots of stuff at your disposal. So, uh, And you mentioned the hot dog stand as well there. Oh, I uh, love the hot dog stand. That's something that you can unlock and then build in the middle of the combat arena. So I'll build my hot dog man here. And it's just <laughs> a bloke who just tosses explosive hot dogs out, uh, which is bad for you if you get caught in the explosion, but also bad for the enemies as well. Yes. Um, and, yeah, so we, we fought... Uh, various enemies so there were um, a couple of human cultist enemies that we were fighting uh, but also a variety of machines as well yes. um, some of them more tricky than others <laughs> uh, a lot of them that would charge at us uh, so you do have to be really on your toes it's not something that you can just you know saunter through and and mash square a few times and expect to come out the other side yeah uh, there is a healthy degree of challenge in the combat which i i really enjoyed and appreciated definitely and going back to the machines quick i just wanted to say i thought they have done a really good job with uh lego fying the machines i know we've already had perfect, like though, right yeah we've already had like a the physical lego um statues of the tall neck yes. with a watcher as well just on the side but seeing all of the machines in this lego style they've done a really good job as well as um you know in uh, zero dawn or forbidden west when you scan and you can see the weaknesses yeah. um they actually have those weaknesses on the lego models as well so even already when we were looking at them i thought i know that's a weakness but yeah. still i'm gonna scan it just yes. to make me feel smart <laughs> i think it's a perfect fit though right like the the machines in in horizon zero dawn and forbidden west they're so perfect to yeah. be legoified yeah and they do work so beautifully uh obviously we've got the actual physical lego tool neck in the office here that we that we built we did a whole live stream building that we did uh, and there was a section where we saw the lego tool neck in lego horizon adventures walking through you run and alongside that it is, oh that bit was great it's beautiful like it's just beautifully walking through and i was trying so hard to as we were moving through the level to keep up with the lego tool neck <laughs> just so it would stay on screen for as That's long right. as i was like looking at other things i was like why are you running so fast now, Rosie, come on <laughs> you literally said come on follow let's go. the tool neck come on let's go <laughs> Uh, but I, it's, it's a massive thrill just from a fan's point of view, I think, yeah. to, uh, to see all of these iconic machines, the tool neck chief among them, uh, and to see how they've been brought to life in, in LEGO Horizon Adventures. It's really, really cool. Um, in, in terms of the environments, I just wanted to touch on it quickly. Uh, we got to explore towards the end of our hands-on with the game, one of the cauldrons. So yes. like those metallic sci-fi interiors that you explore uh, in Horizon Zero Dawn, um, we got to go. We got to do a mission inside one of those, um, and I just thought visually that was amazing as well. Just like the gleam and the shine of it, yeah, um, really evocative of of those cauldrons in Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, but again, just made playful and and Lego like in a way that was really charming and thrilling to see as a fan definitely i completely agree and uh just quickly with the environments i also loved how when you scanned with the focus you know you have like the blue sort of like scan that goes through yeah. you can see like how they've built for example a building and you can see the individual bricks briefly yes. um for how they would have built that building in real life so that was one thing with the environment i was as soon as i realized that i thought i'm gonna scan everything yeah. what bricks did they use here four by four like <laughs> <laughs> uh, talking about the bricks that are used to build things um we should talk about all of the customization options that we encountered <gasps> yes. a lot of them were were locked in the, in the hands-on that we had but you could sort of cycle through them anyway um and just have a look at what might be ava available later down the line um and i think there are lots of fan pleasing details in here so mother's heart acts as like a hub area so after you go out and you complete your missions and you and you collect golden lego blocks mm. um that gradually sort of unlocks and peels back the layers on what you can build in mother's heart so you might be able to build uh, a, a shop for example um and then you can customize how the shop looks so you can change its look and there are a bunch of like horizon themed looks you can yep. have for each of these shops you can also decorate it 
like one of the many other Lego IP. That's yeah, like Lego City, game. Lego Ninjago. Ninjago is in there as well. So my daughter's going to go absolutely crazy. <laughs> she loves Ninjago. Uh, but it's not just the buildings you can customise. Obviously, you can customise your characters as well. Yes. And have Aloy and Rost and Val dress up in some cool costumes not just from the Horizon universe but as we said from from many other universes as well you could be like the iconic blue spaceman yes. um, like who's been in Lego for years and also I loved how I saw the pirate because it reminded me of Lego races on PS1 <laughs> and because he starts in the menu he's the first opponent you race against I was like oh my god I want to be the pirate so I was very happy and there was the hot dog too yes uh, very important so I really like it when you just all you can see of Aloy or Rost or whoever it is you're playing with when you dress them up in the in these costumes, is their their tiny little face. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the Aloy costume is gone. It's just like Aloy's freckly face, surrounded by silly hot dog costume <laughs> or whatever it is you choose. Um, but the fact you've got the freedom to just dress up your characters however you like is is very exciting i think and yeah. all just part of the fun of lego definitely and also just to decorate all the buildings as well which we discovered is beneficial because in mother's heart there are there's like a community board where you can do some side quests yes. and there was one which asked us to build a table to have a feast on it so again it encourages you to try different decorations out interact with them um, and then you get some rewards so it's really nice that they have incorporated yeah. that into the actual hub world itself but yeah i think i'm i'm so impressed with the game like i visually amazing it's got that it's got all of the charm and playfulness you would expect from a lego title um it's got the the thrill of of seeing things you know and love from horizon legoified but also just for me i think i think the thing that i love most is is hearing is hearing ashley birch doing like a a funny Aloy. Yeah. Like, it's so good. She's so, she absolutely nails it. it she is. does such a good job. It's so good to hear her being, like, back in. I mean, because I haven't heard her be as, you know, um, lively as uh, she, when she was Chloe in Life is Strange. So as soon as I heard it, I was like, oh, my God. She's, you know, rather than Aloy, who's very determined to save the world and doesn't yeah. have time to, you know, to laugh for jokes. And jokes and stuff. It's like, oh, my God, I'm getting, like, the, the, the laughy jokey side of Ashley again. I've missed this as well. Yeah. So. So it's, it's been wonderful. It's really strong. It's really great. Uh, so that is Lego Horizon Adventures, available on PS5 on the 14th of November. Let us know in the comments if you're going to be picking up the game. And don't forget to give the video a like and subscribe and click the notification bell so you always stay up to date with everything from the world of PlayStation. Thanks very much for watching. We'll catch you again soon. PlayStation.